So in the last video, I discussed a little bit about power, um, what it represents in the world, my conception of it, and its relation to one of the big philosophical questions, why am I here? And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about language in relation to philosophical questions of that type and in relation to the world in general. Um, that question and questions like it seem answerable by virtue of the fact that language gives rise to them. That is, we can express them through language. Now, this applies to every other statement as well, or question. For example, uh, I ask, or I make a statement, unicorns exist and they live in the Congo region of Africa. I made a statement um, but it's a verifiable statement in that it corresponds to something in the world. Um, so if one were so inclined, one could go to the Congo and after six months or however much time, declare that unicorns do not exist in the Congo and probably don't exist anywhere because no one has ever seen a unicorn. They exist in fairy tales, but not in the real world. <clears throat> so the statement of that type can be something verified. Uh, that it can be verified to be true or false. Um, those are empirical type statements in that they don't relate to empiricism but fall under the empirical category in that we can discover easily whether it's true or not. And questions of that sort also can be found out. You can ask, for example, what distance is it from Miami to New, uh, New York? Or New York to Paris? And by the unit, by a certain unit of measurement, you can use miles or kilometers, either one, that can be verified. It has been measured and it stands in un, under the empirical cap. So it's something that we can verify again. But in philosophy there arises a sort of problem um, because these questions are given rise to in the same way as the empirical questions through language and by virtue of language they seem answerable in a way that they would not seem if they could not be expressed through language if it remained in the mind and if it was only an idea in the mind then perhaps it would be seen another way. The world itself could be seen in another way as maybe existing, maybe not. But language gives a structure. Words themselves seem to give a structure to things. A type of malleability or manipulability. So when uh, you ask why am I here or you write it down on a piece of paper it seems to require an answer it 
seems to demand an answer just by virtue of the fact of language. That doesn't mean that there is an answer. There is no one answer I can give to satisfy all the conditionals. That's every person's um, experience. I don't know. No one person can give a <laughs> rational answer to that question. So it remains, so it's an, it becomes unanswerable. The, um, but in language, but there is something in language that gives every question and every statement a certain weight um, and a certain proportion, certain properties. Um, even though the statement may be insane, may have nothing to do with anything that we can see or experience, it may seem insane. And there's no way to prove it, no way to know. But by language, by virtue of language, it seems to require an answer in the negative or the positive. Um, I say unicorns exist, and that's uh, an irrational statement, but it requires an answer. It requires someone to say, no, they do not exist. So, a lot of these types of questions that can be seen as esoteric or philosophical, etc., and that do not seem to correspond with anything in the world, nevertheless, seem to require an answer to rebut them. Um, so I just wanted to explore that part of it. Now, just because these types of philosophical questions are unanswerable um, does not mean that they are meaningless or pointless or they don't have uh, value because they speak to the ineffable about existence about human existence in particular um, and in the ineffable one can go one of two ways when faced with the ineffable um, and that's the, to fall into a type of despair that these questions even exist and that the mind demands an answer for them or to treat the mystery as just that a mystery and part of um, existence itself, something that is just another part of being human. And if this has interested you, please leave a comment or like and subscribe. Thank you.